Stick around after the show today because uh, we have some fantastic outtakes that we could not just leave into the delete pile. Um, after the credits, stick around for a while. It's a fun little ride. <laughs> Welcome to iHeart Geek. And welcome to another episode of iHeart Geek. Yes, indeed. Welcome. Welcome to the show. All right. Tonight. Let's get this wow. show on the road. Yes. Well, you know, <clears throat> we're we're missing something. We're doing we're doing a female superheroes and I don't hear any anything in the high register. Oh. I guess that would be me then. Oh, huh? well, there what? we go. What? 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 Who's this? She just flew in. It just out of nowhere. In my invisible jet. Like Wonder Woman. So I hope you parked that thing where you were supposed to. It's Otherwise, someone will hit it. It's on the roof. Excellent. Nice. I didn't know my roof was that strong. I'm impressed. Well, it's I'm not Christmas, so there's no reindeer sleigh yeah, risk. So but she's but there's John McClain, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> he hangs out on your roof. He hangs out on your roof. Waiting for Christmas Good every to year. Know. Yippee cat. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Family friendly Kaj. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay, so let's go around the table a little bit first. I'm Dub, and I'm your producer for the show. And to the other side of the table is my good buddy Kaj. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing quite well. You are pissing oh off the drinkers every time. <laughs> uh, well,. I might feel good. There you go. That's what we needed here. I might feel really good. <laughs> That's two shots. That's two shots. Okay. And I over- don't drink anymore, thank God. <laughs> if I did that, that would have been the one episode would have killed me. Oh, my gosh. What was that, 15? Something like that. That that wasn't very nice, Kosh. Good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's three. So how are you doing, PB? I'm doing great. I'm interested, excited. We have a guest, which is awesome. Yep. Mm. Guess we have... Who we all know, but we've never actually met in person, other than Kaj. Yep. Oh um, and actually, since Kaj, you do, you are, you have a personal relationship. Why don't you introduce our special uh, Facebook guest? Because she's always on Facebook. Big Facebook, so Facebook page Facebook. contributor. All right. All right. Well, uh, this a wonderful lady I have known for probably. F- 700 years it's what uh, it feels so like yeah it's been, it, it's been a long time i've done i've done a few shows with her she has directed me in a few shows as well and uh she is a very big contributor on to the iheart geek page so when we were thinking about having people uh for filling in she was one of my top people uh right off the bat uh miss courtney sheets or as her superhero name is siege Hi, yay. Yay. yay welcome welcome yay. i'm excited to powerful be here. so gosh Hi. Hi. <laughs> does she uh does she crack the whip actually she doesn't she, she doesn't, really crack doesn't. The no whip. no that's what one of the great well and we'll talk this talk about this in future future Next episodes episode. but there you know there there are certain types of directors you know and the one that cracks the whip is kind of the one that you know unless you're getting paid a huge amount of money to to endure like you're really not going to work with them well, I don't know if that's so. true because Dub directs this show, cracks oh. the whip. Oh, here we I'm go. I'm not making a ton of money, and yet I'm here every week. Uh, just for you. <laughs> <laughs> the occasional come to Jesus me. Okay, uh, Siege, because we are doing our our female superheroes heroes. What what we what did where did we land on this? Female heroes, heroes, yeah, because we don't. Care Some about of them the are super Fe- female heroes that are, yeah, that are super female heroes. Actually, they're all super. Some <laughs> yeah. of them just have powers. They're super duper. That's a good there way of putting yeah. it. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> so um, we we want to get kind of your take on the whole female superhero. <laughs> Recently, it's really exploded, um, and I know that you read a lot of comic books. I do, and this makes me happy. <laughs> I do. So, tell us, what do you think about this new explosion? Is it is it something that's a long time coming? Is it too much, too little, too late? Um, I wouldn't call it too little, too late. Um, I personally like the fact that there is so much coming out. Because when I was growing up, there weren't a lot. We had, we had Linda Carter as Wonder Woman. Oh, yeah. Um, we had the Bionic Woman. And we had Princess Leia. And that was really kind of the extent of... Of what we had in the seventies, cine- yeah, for sure. cinematically yeah. to look up to, because and so I mean I read comic books, so I, there were there were lots of female superheroes in the comic books, but when it came to mass media, where kids who didn't read comic books were getting exposed to it, they were there weren't a lot of females out there. So to have all of these great female characters finally kind of getting their due in film mm-hmm. and TV, it's I love it because I have two young nieces, mm-hmm. and so it's like, hey, look, 
girls can do everything. Mm -hmm. And I love it. So I know some people think it's too little too late. Nah. I'm you just know, happy for what we've got. I appreciate that attitude because I, you know, we're geeks and we all we, it's it's been too little, too late, quote unquote, for all the superhero movies. We we waited our whole lives. We'd get a superhero movie every ten years. Now we get like twenty a year, which is mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, and it's a lot, but and we've in all that, had to wait. And with that thought, mm -hmm. it's kind of why I wish some people would quit some of the level of complaining <laughs> that you know wow. about. I well, mean, like the okay. DC people and the no, no, Marvel no. If you want to, if you want to, like, analyze a film that didn't quite work, right? That's fine. But anything beyond that, any kind of weird complaining about this, that, and the other thing, diversity or, mm -hmm. or lack thereof, or you know, all these things, give it a rest. Look at what's happening. It's completely amazing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's going to get better, right? So mm -hmm. just. Be happy about it. It is a dream come true. And like the thing that the thing that I remember the most that I thought was a really kind of a beautiful thing is I went in to go see Batman versus Superman. And in the particular viewing that I was, there was no cheering, no cr no crowd response at all until Wonder Woman showed up right. mm -hmm. the first time in her costume. Right, because oh, yeah. and that audience which had been right. dead quiet until that point. Right. And we're talking men, women, boys, girls. Everyone was in there because it was pretty full because it was the opening weekend. Mm -hmm. there, we had a dead crowd until she showed right. up. And then that crowd just erupted uh -huh. in happiness. And that's because, sorry, Carl the Black Geek, uh, because it really wasn't a good movie until she no, showed up. No, it's... it's, it's it's a terrible film. Yeah, well, but <laughs> sorry, but see that—that's the beauty of it. It has nothing to do with it's a female. That is a well-written character, well-written scene in the movie. The music's perfect. Yep. That's what you can do with a good character. I don't care if it's yeah. male, female, black, white, orange, purple. It is a great character. And to a certain extent, for like women of my generation, we waited our whole lives to see. Wonder mm -hmm. Woman, who we grew up with, Wonder Woman on the big screen, and we got that chance, and I'm not even going to lie, I might have teared up a little bit, because it was six-year-old Courtney sitting in the, in the movie theater, seeing who I wanted to be when mm. I was six years old, yeah. finally on screen. So, I mean... Kicking tail I, and taking names. Too. Right. I love it. I, and and I, I was, love it. I was so glad at everything about her first appearance in Batman vs Superman and her movie mm -hmm. how great that movie really was mm -hmm. I mean it was you know I mean how could you not look at that movie and just go damn they did it they mm -hmm. did it absolutely correct you know mm -hmm. so yeah I was sitting with the uh during her movie, it was the same kind of thing when basically when the Amazon stormed the beach, you had women like me just we were crying <laughs> because we were just so happy to see this and and this goes along with the too little too late i don't think so because now i can show that to my nieces right who are three and five right now and they can see all these powerful ladies doing wonderful and amazing things mm -hmm. i may not have had that when i was growing up to the extent that they do but i'm glad that they do yeah mm -hmm. That's awesome. So. It, was, it was never a, ma a matter of if; it was just a matter of when. Exactly. And now it's now, like you said, now the next generation, like in ten, fifteen years, they're going to be. It was like, what do you, what do you mean that there was a time when female yeah. females yeah. superheroes weren't represented or anything like that? It's exactly. Like, no, I, I just watched yeah. four last night. What are you talking about? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I say, and the beauty thing that I really like with a lot of these heroes is, I say, it's not. They're not great because they're because they're female, but they're the women and the men are on the same battlefield doing the same thing, and they're mm -hmm. playing to their strengths, and I think that's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I know. think it'll be nice when we can just talk about superhero, superhero. movies, right? You yeah, know? I mean that'll be great, and it and it doesn't matter. Yeah. You won't have a dis you don't have to distinguish it. It's just mm -hmm. superhero movies. And yes, it's all represented. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so somewhere oh, over okay, Ricardo Montalban, uh, somewhere needs over to the drop multiverse, you with a house. <laughs> over the multiverse, right? See, there's a multiverse. <laughs> I and think I acknowledged that some dozen shows ago or something. So, with that said, let's jump over, and Jason is going to got a game show for us. 
Here's a generic game show for you. Okay, so yes, I do have a game show. No 3366? No 3366. No 6633? No, there's never that. It's there's just always. the other one. That's a lie. Um, so yes, <laughs> I have... Yeah, that's right. I have a game show um, going with the female hero theme. A lot of firsts in this game show. Um, so I am going to read the game show questions. The answers have been pre-written because we don't want a bunch of uh on the show. Like oh, I just did. Way to peel back the curtain, Jason. Oh, they know that already. <laughs> but, but anyway, we are going to begin. So here we go. Okay, question. Sorry. Yeah, question number one, because this is not 3366. All right. Who was the first female superhero represented in comics? Dub. Uh, Sue Storm. No, incorrect. Siege. I was going to go with Wonder Woman, but I'm going to say Invisible Girl, because I think she was before Wonder Woman. Incorrect. I figured. Kaj. I'm just going to go for the gusto and put Wonder Woman. Incorrect. Ah. She was like eighth, to be honest. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, there were, there were several before her. Uh, it is, if I pronounce this correctly, Phantoma, Mystery Woman of the Jungle. Oh, you know what? I actually, okay. She was the first... Mm-hmm. Superhero. She actually had powers. She could change into like a a monster, like a blue skulled monster like thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. and was, got some strength and stuff. It was the same era as um, was it the the, 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 the Phantom, Phantom in the Shadow? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. Well, speaking of the era, question number two is when did she appear? Dub. I think there's a big time continuum that happens in 1946. So I'm gonna guess 46. No, incorrect. Courtney. If it's the same time as the Shadow and the Phantom, then it's got to be in like 35 or 36. Which one are you going I'm going to go with 36. Okay. Incorrect. Well, that tells us what it is. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull a <laughs> prices right here and say 1935. <laughs> <laughs> no, incorrect. It was, um, it was 1940. I was close. Uh, yep. Of course. And I literally course, wrote 1940, but that was because I thought Invisible Girl, Invisible Girl was 1940. I know. So did I. <laughs> right. No, no, no answer changing. Oh, dang it. You cannot change answers. <laughs> All right. So no one will probably know number three, but I'm mm-hmm. going to say it anyway. Who created Phantoma? You guys probably don't uh, know. Rob Liefeld. Okay. No. Not a clue. Not a clue. Philip Seymour Hoffman. No. <laughs> okay. It was uh, Fletcher Hanks. Okay. That was the creator. Okay. Like I'm writing these down name. like I'm going to look them up later. Great, All right. Are great, you going to? Great no. grandfather uh-huh. of Tom Hanks. All right. So the, 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 the points are just racking up at this point. Right. Um, all right. Question number four. Who was the first female sidekick? Dub. Batgirl. No. Incorrect. Etta Candy? No. Incorrect. Speedy? No. Incorrect. It would be Speedy Golden Girl, Betsy Ross. Real was that before like pre Hulk Betsy Ross? Not not Betty Ross. Not Betty Ross. Betsy Ross. Uh, all right, was she um, Captain America before or after Bucky? Uh, well, the next question was who was she a sidekick to? Oh, there you go. Well, I didn't write it, but I'm t- I know what the answer is. It would be Captain America. Oh. Right. So what did you write? I actually wrote. Oh, I thought it was Batgirl. So okay. Be Batman. Okay. I put Wonder Woman because I said Edit Candy. Okay. I put Green Arrow because of Speedy. Okay. Uh, it was Captain America. Do I get a point? No. Oh come on! <laughs> uh, We're no, not she, getting any points. She was on this a she was a sidekick no. to Captain America, actually, right around the same time as Bucky. Very weird um, skirt that she wore. It's like a mini skirt. That yeah, was the gold kind of. Yeah, with was, the, yeah. yeah bizarre. Wonder Woman wore a skirt right. the first couple of. Episodes well, no, it's different. So. It was different from Wonder Woman's though. Is the the red and white stripes? It looked like kind of a tent. Oh, and it had the so um, like and it had the naval um, fringe on the bottom. Then uh, do you see a navy flag and it's got the, that. So gold it kind of looked like the girls in the movie. Did I wonder yeah. if they based? I wonder yeah. if they based those costumes uh, off. You know, of I didn't her. think about that, but probably that's that's right. a obscure Easter egg. That's you awesome. Dun, 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 dun. I think we all right. deserve a point. So Every, no, point all the way around. No. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Just because I'm tired of looking at this blank sheet. Blank sheet of paper. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but I think we're actually going to get better now because I think these next set of questions are going to yield some points. Uh, we'll see. Let's mm-hmm. hope. All right, number six. Who was the first female? Villainess. Catwoman. Correct. Oh. That's what I had to. Correct. 
I I went the opposite because of Wonder Woman and put Cheetah. I was Incorrect. thinking of I was Cheetah. thinking that too. Okay, and there's a bonus question that I'm just going to throw in for the two who got it right. Mm-hmm. If you if you can figure it out, she was not called Catwoman in her first appearance. Do you know what she was called? Dub. Uh, femme fatale. No. Okay. Do you know Courtney? Not a clue. Kaj, do you know? I'll just throw I, it out there. I can't say it. This is a family friendly show. <laughs> 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 no, she was just called the cat. Oh, okay. okay. That's terrible. I know. That's probably why they changed her to Catwoman. Smart. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And when did she first appear? Uh, 56. No, incorrect. 50? Incorrect. 47. Incorrect. Oh. Also 1940. Oh, oh okay. And what, did, what comic did she appear in? Uh, Detective Comics. Incorrect. Mm. Sensation Comics? Incorrect. Wiz Comics. Incorrect. She appeared in Batman number one. So it's just ah. Batman. Ah. Oh, always go with your gut on this, people. Mm. I, I was thinking mm. the same thing. <laughs> Dang it. All right. Number nine. The points are on the paper, though, so at least that's good. Cool. Number nine. Who was the first female superhero in a TV series? Dub. Uh, the Six Million Dollar Woman. No, incorrect. Well, was it close? I I had the same thing. Oh, like, man. yeah, okay. I, I thought that's what it was. Siege. Isis. Correct. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> was that? Was what? Was Wonder Woman. She, was a, yeah. she spun off from Shazam. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she had the magic of Isis as the first mm-hmm. oh, ongoing TV series. I'd never Very good. made their own so, show. But we're, Very good. We're, we're, we're kind of in the same, we're same oh. yeah, park. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Good job thank you, thank on that you. one. <laughs> All right. Who was the first female superhero to have her own film? She was the lead in the film, Dub. Supergirl. Correct. Oh, I completely forgot Supergirl. So does everybody. That's what I said. This is going to be an aha I, moment. I wasn't oh, sure. I, wasn't, I put Electra. Oh, oh. No, no. I was very hesitant. Because you said it was terrible. Super, super and I actually too? enjoy yeah. Supergirl. You like the orb. I Come really on, like, you did not I really like, like Faye Dunaway chewing scenery oh, as no. the villain I, in that. Now this really is the, I the, the extra point if I know the actress? No. <laughs> but the interesting and, and thing about this now. Yeah, Kelly Slater, yeah, huh. is, um, the, the, again, a time thing. Like, F- Phantom of Mystery Woman of the Jungle was 1940. It took till 1984 for a, mm-hmm. for a female superhero to get her first. It took 75 years yeah, for Wonder time. Woman to show up on film. Right, that's true. T- 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 took that long just to give her into a mediocre, uh, mediocre mm-hmm. movie. Okay, and here, is the, here is the bonus question. I'm going to make this, this one worth two points. If you can get it right, number eleven. Who played Wonder Woman in her first, in her true first appearance in the 1974 made-for-TV movie dub? I'm 100 percent wrong, Linda Carter, but I no, wish it was incorrect. Kathy Lee Crosby. Correct. Oh wow! Wow. She was blonde. She was blonde. Ew. Mm-hmm. It's Sarah terrible. Michelle Geller. Is that who you put? <laughs> No. I put Linda Carter. Linda Linda Carter. Carter. Incorrect. Everybody thinks it's Linda Carter, but it was Kathy Lee Crosby. Kathy Lee Crosby. First. Correct. All right. Let me tally up these numbers, these huge oh, numbers geez. here. <laughs> um, you need to carry the two and... That's the, that's the whole point. It's two. Dub <laughs> and Kaj tied with Negative three four. points. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Three, three, three points. That's three more than I thought I'd get on this. Yeah. <laughs> However, our esteemed special guest, Siege, Courtney... With five points. Boom. Wow. And it's the Kathy Lee Crosby. It's the Kathy Lee Crosby factor yep, that, that, that sent one. you to the winner's That's circle. What did it. Right. Congratulations. I, you have won the game thank show. Thank you. Thank you. Right, See, one, now, this is a lot of useless <laughs> female superhero trivia. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now we're going to um, do something that wasn't planned at all, but w- because I have, we haven't had one I'm forever. not taking my clothes off. Yes, Me you neither. Are. Gross. Dang it. <sighs> we're going to do an anime segment. I don't feel good. Anime we have more news and thoughts on anime than you can swing a katana at. Tell, oh. tell us about the, the females in anime, sir. Oh my god, like, uh, yeah, dubbed through this, I mean, uh, like, a couple of days ago, so I t- it's, there's so many in the, in the anime world, it's great, like, I kind of, I'm kind of even thinking that, like, Females and female, even superheroes and genre, they like in anime. They have been like very well 
kind of written out and there there's so many different characters it, it it depends on what you like if you mm-hmm. want if you want somebody that's just like gritty hard as nails the major is, th- then you can do major kuzanaki which is my number one i'll just say it now um or you can have somebody that's like um if like an awesome housewife that will be able to kick kick the superhero's tail you can do bulma from dragon ball z mm-hmm. you have winry who is like the ultimate best friend who slowly but surely starts turning into a girlfriend um yeah there's I mean, there's just there's a plethora of just like uh, different superhero group. I, I just I'm blanking now. Sorry. Well, let me ask, let me. Can I ask this question? Because <laughs> um, I know you're really into the whole anime thing. Ask, ask me questions. Does it hurt the whole females in the genre because of how much you get with the big eye tee girls? That's because there's a lot of the you know brainless. It's eye the, candy. Well, it's it's funny because they have like at at the beginning, like at first, they were there was a lot of the tee like you know, like the the women were were females were secondary in in of the males, like the males would would be the general mm-hmm. main hero. But over time, it is now definitely the the, the flip the script where they even use it. Like some of them will use that like to pretend like oh I'm so I'm so coy I don't know what I'm I don't know what I'm doing, but like we'll just totally like destroy destroy the 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 evil bad guy Mm -hmm. just through that or it's i my personal favorite ones are the ones that they they're they're sweet and innocent and you know they're they're very naive to whatever's around them but legitimately they're the power the most powerful entity in in the entire series and they don't know it and is it really tee hee or is it more like ha ha when their face, no math, their face disappears, well, and well, it's they, all they, mouth. They kind of close their eyes and just kind of leave <laughs> the thing. But I guess I don't. Yeah. Know. But but with that, like yeah, like the, uh, uh, the the ones that I mean, there's like I said, there you can put put a set of descriptions on, and I can find a character for you that would f- would fit any any role sure. that a man that a man can have, if not more. Like I think there's more female. Uh, heroines and leads in anime than there is in just regular TV. And or, kind of has been. I mean, that's not so yeah. much of a new thing. I mean, they, they, they yeah, were they, ahead of the they've, curve. They, 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 they dominate far more than right. far more than the guys do. No, I'm really looking forward to when Carl and Sean come on the show and yell at you for everything you missed on this, because I'm sure that they're going to, they're into this, all right? Um, well, Sean, uh, no, Sean, no. I have tried numerous oh, yeah, yeah, times yeah, yeah, and yeah. failed. He but Carl's not going to be happy with your mad. answer. No, he, no, he's uh, <laughs> no. Carl's going to be mad at me for bagging on Batman versus Superman. Everybody <laughs> does. He'd just be mad at the world. Then I get an excuse because I'm the guest. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so yeah, I can like, bag on it. And yeah, yeah well, I mean, if, if you watch Naruto, Full Metal Alchemist, Bleach, like they all have their 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 female characters that are if, if yeah. like equal or if not better than the lead character or the or their male counterpart and even things like the ruby which is like ruby, pretty much all is, female which is four leads. girls yeah, yeah. And it's a four girl team well, sailor moon going, all that stuff sailor moon yeah like right even with yeah okay cool. cool so let's move on a little bit and now what what initially got me very interested in getting siege on the show is we i said we need to do a psychology of wonder woman and she goes uh, hello, <laughs> I'm here. And I said, okay, well, let's talk. And then she didn't pee in me back. I know, I'm I like, didn't. I okay, didn't. that hurts. <laughs> so, I but I do want to, I wanted to kind of mildly hit upon the importance of Wonder Woman. Um, when you think of, of superheroes that are female, you that's the first name that pop, should pop into your mind, I think. I mean, what, what do you guys think about the evolution of Wonder Woman? I mean, how she initially started. I'm. We're not going to go too deep into it, but just enough. Um, what do you, how do you guys think of how she started versus who she is? Um, let's start with, actually with yeah, Courtney. let's give it over to our guest. Um, no I, pressure. No pressure. Talk. <laughs> well, I mean, she was the the most recent movie about the hair creator, notwithstanding. Uh, she was created because Morrison looked around and said there are no really amazing strong female characters. To compete with Batman and Superman and Cap, who was around, and I think Green Lantern was around too, and Neymar. So, like, they, mm-hmm. they had this huge pantheon mm-hmm. of, of male superheroes already at the time. And then, you know, they had people like Invisigirl and Fanta- Phantasma, is that what her name was? Phantoma. Phantoma. And, and Sheena of the yeah, Queen Sheena, of the Jungle. I mean, a few other ones. There yeah. wasn't... Yeah, Barrell, I think, was even... There wasn't quite a female superhero that was on the same kind of level mm-hmm, right. as Batman and Superman 
and Cap and Green Lantern at the mm-hmm. time. And those were the ones that the boys were looking at. And so his wife basically looked at him and says, why don't you write a woman? Mm-hmm. And uh, she and his polyamorous, their polyamorous partner basically served as the stereotype Mm -hmm. for wonder woman so i mean she was created to give little girls in the 40s someone to look up to too Mm -hmm. and i mean wonder woman you know she the difference between her and say batman and superman at the time was wonder woman it was it she approached her villains so to speak with a sense of love and honor and respect not that Mm -hmm. batman and superman don't have that but it was more more he gave her more toward the emotional side cuz uh-huh. women were considered more compassionate some of But I think that I, not. I, I think that's helped the, that has helped the character That probably would be better because yeah. I can't imagine Batman going I love you. Right. But He'd I, say I know. Okay. Right. <laughs> but if if I remember correctly wasn't like especially like during during the first like few four or five years of it it was a lot of bondage stuff in there too that's oh, because the they were really in the yeah. like, yeah. like oh yeah he, he well that's got, where the rope yeah. came from he got in serious trouble for a lot of that because mm-hmm. bondage was a big part of his his kink lifetime anyways <laughs> right. and his lifestyle so he put that into the wonder woman book so yeah there's if you read some of the very like from till 1947 because he passed away in 47 and so the book was taken out of his control at that time obviously because he passed away but right. and changed she was changed quite a bit if you read some of the older ones there's there's a lot of tying each other up and there's a lot of spanking mm-hmm. and, a lot of and submission stuff and, and yeah and a yeah. lot of submission and dominance you can imagine a conversation like, um, <laughs> now little girls are starting to take to take to this character perhaps we should have a little less rope <laughs> and that was the big deal. That's part of the thing that he got in trouble with because right. the um, some I can't remember exactly what the name of the the organization was that pitched a stink about it. Mm-hmm. But it was well. You've got these kids tying Wonder Woman's tying up this other woman, and this woman is tying Wonder Woman up, and you know it's pretty blatant bondage <laughs> yeah. imagery in the first several years of the, was of the book. She, was she mentioned in the same? Um, psychological profile book that they did the batman and robin saying that there's the pedophiles and all that is that this is that the same i i probably would be i think because um, the, the other thing area. they had a big problem with was the um kind of veiled lesbianism that is in there mm-hmm. too because i mean one of her original explanations or her exclamations was sweet sappho and so, I mean, imagine being in 1941 and had to explain to some little girl, why does it she say sweet Sappho? And you had to explain that. So, I mean... <laughs> or just hear your kid, uh, like, was that, I mean, your eight-year-old daughter being like, sweet Sappho. Yeah, I mean, like, just oh, think no, of the no, big no. stink that people had a couple years ago when they finally... When some... The, her Not her creator, but the one who's doing her run now basically said, well, she's mm-hmm. bisexual. People kind of threw it big fit which is weird well, yeah, cause those because of us who, quite honestly when you're raised on an island with yeah, all females exactly. and, if you're and right, you right. go through puberty with all females <laughs> what's gonna happen what's gonna happen well and everybody who'd ever read the comic book up until that point in time we were like yeah we knew but yeah <laughs> now now there's a big difference between you know we always complain when they always try to throw social issues into comic books years and years after they've been done but that's always been an undertone that's yeah. never a it's not yeah. even it's just logical it's, it's yeah. logical and she I was mean, raised on an island with all females yeah what's gonna happen to a certain extent like between like 47 and 67 because in those 20 years the i mean marson was passed on and he didn't have con- no one you know his true vision of it wasn't controlled him or it was changed and kind of diluted mm-hmm. Wonder Woman really kind of fell out of popular view, and it really wasn't until Gloria Steinem took her and put Wonder Woman on the cover of Miss Magazine in 19, I believe, 76, mm-hmm. and really kind of announced her as a feminist icon that she started to upswing again, and people really started to mm-hmm. look at the character again mm-hmm. and go, oh, wait a moment, maybe she's really kind of awesome. Well, then with, I remember, oh God, I can't remember who, who did it. Um, because he he even feels embarrassed about it. He's like, there's the biggest mistake that he ever did was that he took, um, he took Wonder, and that's why Gloria Steinem like. I, I think it was Winnick. It was oh god, it was or it was. Um, she I'll, was I'll stripped look, of her powers. In stripped of her time. powers. Put her in the gave, suit. Gave her like gave her like uh, gave her the business. Put her in the business suit. Like, suit. The, the, oh no no, that's not who I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah no, I think of a different. Well, one. they completely stripped her. Uh, they completely stripped her of her powers in between that time period. I mean, she didn't really get in the comics. She didn't really get her powers back. 
as we know them until the 60s. But right. to be fair, this is the same time that they were taking Superman's powers away because he's too powerful. Mm-hmm. And if mm-hmm. if the writer isn't good, they can't write people that mm-hmm. are good enough to face the person. Mm-hmm. They have to just take depower power, them. Depower what? them. Exactly. Well, they, oh, first they overpower, then they depower. Yeah. So to be fair, that was what was going on in comics at the time. I don't think that was a yeah. thing. Uh, it's what I, I would. I'd rather them kind of debuff her a little bit than instead of like strip all of her powers and then just give her some. Because I mean, the greatest the greatest uh, superheroes always have like. Not a trouble past, but they always have their issues, their kinks, their their issues, mm-hmm. or what. I, w- I would have rather her had a couple of issues than for her to, to be just totally stripped of everything, and now she's just a mortal woman. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, they should have just had some kinks in the armor. Yeah. Things yeah. that could be exploited. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Let, let me mm-hmm. ask everybody this real quick, go, kind of going around the table. Who is your favorite and least favorite incarnation of Wonder Woman? Um, mm. Yeah, my, my least favorite was the. Uh, when they changed, when they put her in that uh, the, the the waist jacket, and, oh, the hot oh, topic outfit, well, yeah, yeah, that was oh, yeah. Nice. terrible. Yeah. Oh. oh, I hated that. And then my favorite is probably the Justice League Unlimited era. Um, very strong, very powerful, but not overpowered. I t- uh, you know what that that the strong, sexy costume. I've got no yeah. problem with oh, that. Oh, well, I'm not talking costume. I'm talking just the character. Well, yeah, the, the yeah, um, the Justice League Unlimited. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. agreed. Um, very traditional, you know, even, but not even Linda Carter. You know, oh. it's like mm-hmm. she was sexy as can be, but mm-hmm. she was strong as well. And mm-hmm. it's like, and I'll give that to Gal. I mean, she has it too. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, you yeah. put you you put the Wonder Woman is supposed to be sexy, and she's supposed to be strong at the same time. And she's also supposed to have that slight innocence about her. And that I slight think innocence, Gal right. Dot, uh, I was hesitant when she was cast originally, mm-hmm. and she won me over. She she started to win me over in Batman versus Superman, but it is literally the ice cream scene. <laughs> but the ice cream scene in oh, in Wonder Woman the yeah, movie okay, okay. that I turned to my mom because I saw the movie like six times. Um, <laughs> I turned to my mom nice. and I said, "She's perfect mm-hmm. because she did the same thing Linda Carter did. She managed to capture the sexiness, the strength." Mm-hmm. Um. The loving warmth mm-hmm. and the innocence yeah. Yeah. that Wonder Woman is really supposed to have. I right. have to say, the scene where she is talking to Chris Pine while he's naked was my favorite scene. So good, right? So, yeah, the innocence yeah. was there, mm-hmm. and like that scene was so sweet and mm-hmm. so perfect. Yeah. You know? Well, the, the same scene you're talking about when they did Justice League War, Rosario da- Dawson did it, and that is what can go wrong with Wonder Woman, doing the exact same scene, mm-hmm. and it was when it's too innocent, it's horrible. There's, there's this line that they just mm-hmm. hit. There's this, it's, but. it's a. It, it, Wonder Woman has to be, and maybe it's because she's such an important character to me that I'm an extremely picky person when it comes to my Wonder Woman, and I feel that you have to, you have to really know, you have to understand the source material. You have to understand mm-hmm. the character if you're gonna make it make her the way she's supposed right, to be. Right, right. I mean, she has to be feminine. She has to be badass. Mm-hmm. You know? She's got to have that mix of both of them. Yes. But I will say that Rosario Dawson actually, uh, like, redeemed herself for me anyway when they did uh, Death of Superman with uh, the new anime. Was she the, the one that was doing? Yes, yeah, she was. Okay. And then she, she turned into, she instead of it being the ice cream from Justice League War, she turned into Gal Gadot yeah, to, well, to, to fight Doomsday. It's easier when you have that source material to work yeah, off of. And, and, now, mm-hmm. and now Wonder Woman's been, like Diana's been here for a while, and she knows she knows how to how to, to carry herself in this mm-hmm. modern world, I guess you'd mm-hmm. say. Yeah. Okay, well, let's, let's move on from Wonder Woman a little bit. I'm sure we'll get back into her at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk. DC versus Marvel versus Image versus, you know, all the other comic book stuff with that we've read growing up, Dark mm-hmm. Horse and blah, blah, blah. Who's done the best job about creating female characters and who's the worst? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think there's really a worst. Uh, really? Okay, let's... Stanley to screwed up some stuff. Like with the Stripperella, mm. that, was, that was nothing but degradation. Uh, uh, heavy de- metal, although we love heavy metal terrible for women overall i'd probably have to give it to marvel overall as best or worst best best yeah i think it took them a while 
And I know that they've definitely tripped along the way, but take they take the cinematic out though. What? But if you take the cinematic out, we're talking. No, no, I'm talking comics. in the no, comic books. Okay. I'm talking about how many trend-setting characters Marvel got in there first. I mean, mm -hmm. Wonder Woman in DC was first, and there were other ones, or Catwoman and, and some other ones, but the Storms and the um, the X Men and like things like that. That was yeah. groundbreaking, and it really did like from the get go. You know, really put those women on on equal planes. You know, there wasn't like the men and the women. It was the mutants, and they were all looked right. at like the mutants. And it wasn't the female mutants and the male mutants. Yeah. It was it was really presented well. And and when they did um, some of the offshoot characters like the Spider Women and mm -hmm. things like that. Now I know that there was some controversy around some art with one of the spider women oh, but um yeah, I remember that but one. essentially I'm like the idea behind them there. when they were initially created they were not you know they were they were on equal playing field with spider-man mm -hmm. and it wasn't a thing they just were so i think that marvel not that dc did bad because they have a lot of good ones too but i think marvel probably edges into the best in my opinion well i think we get a lot of step forward step back i mean like you have like fantastic characters like um, with DC um, Power Girl who is just a fantastic character and then they do the boob window there's that costume the, mm -hmm. the, the boob window costume which literally he drew her boobs bigger every month until they finally said something and it was I think nine months and then okay well that's that's the biggest we can go and that that's kind of, that's gross um, that's not mm -hmm. yeah it, I it, suggested at a comic con that I was at to a panel that was doing a thing and that that subject came up mm -hmm. that they should equal it out by making a ball window for the men <laughs> that's amazing and uh, that would have been butt perfect panel. or a butt window a sure butt for panel. the men hairy butt window <laughs> um well another one I can give you is um It'll take I, him 12 months <laughs> right <Ew. laughs> um have you I don't know if you guys read um hack slash Cassie mm -hmm. hack is I mean she's uh, to me, a great female character because she's not just a female character. She is, uh, she's kick-ass. She's smart. She's funny. She's got her definite huge issues, and she still, you know, goes and solves solves crimes. Blah blah blah. Whatever it is she does, beats up monsters basically. Um, <laughs> and the uh, the original writer. I mean, I, I saw his original notes for when he drew the character. Do not ever make her boobs too big. Do not ever show too much skin. I'm like nice mm -hmm. you know that's that to me is a really good basis i mean you can still screw up a character but that's to me is a good basis of it right mm -hmm. so if you wanted to talk about the worst i yeah i this one's kind of controversial but i guess it, in a way this is the worst that would probably be the 90s j scott campbell era I think J. Scott Campbell actually might have done the art on that Spider Woman that had so much controversy. Oh, uh, the uh, he did yeah, like. I think that one was relatively new. That's was pretty it, new. Yeah, yeah was it, it was, J. Scott? Could probably was J. Scott. That was King. literally if, taken off of porn. If it's the one I'm thinking of, is is Spider Woman is climbing over like a wall, like yeah. a ledge, and her ass is. Oh, sorry. Up. It's okay. Booty. It's that. Her booty is sticking straight up in this just ridiculous pose. Pose. It's gross. That first off. Oh, a human being isn't going to be able to contort their body. I don't care if you're like the best yoga person in the world, but it's also it's it is literally here is Spider Woman's butt. And, and I agree with you, but as far as the weird poses go, I mean, you can, if you can't get mad at that for the pose, if you don't get mad at Spider Man for his, I was worried. I was more annoyed for the, with for the, the butt. bizarre po poses he gets. I'm like I was more eh. annoyed about the butt. That's my thing. Yeah. And I'm the girl that's not... I don't care, really, about costuming to to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. I mean, because Spider-Woman's costume is actually, if you look at it, it's pretty offensive if you get offended by that stuff anyways. Well, if you, you shouldn't be reading comic so, books. Right! Like, eh. I mean, I'm used to stuff... The only, the only costume that I do not like of any comic... But that's one. Of any comic book heroine out there is really... I hate Vampirella's costume. <sighs> oh, yeah? I hate it. Let me make a quick correction because I said J. Scott Campbell. Actually, the Spider-Woman artist is uh, Milo Manera. Yeah, and I he's, think he, he just wrote that. Got, got ran he out got of the it, industry. He got it, right, right. Yeah. Right, so anyway, Vampirella. I just, I hate her costume. Yeah. And I like her. I Well, we're going to discuss her on my on my list. Okay, then I will But I, I, I do want, I do want to say this, go. though, with that costume. In the 70s, it worked. 
Right, that's why I don't get too angry because about it. Because it was a just... 70s, it's a 70s comic book. Uh, but when they updated her 2005, I mean, most of the time she's in her, in different, almost Matrix-y types clothes, and I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, know? I mean... It, it's just such a good, but she still has that throwback to... It's, yeah, those, anything that's in those, um, the IWF yeah. comics, right. I read them. Right. <laughs> Well, anyway, I sometimes let, don't like I, their I got, I got I got my info in order now. So okay. so like nineties with J. Scott Campbell, like Danger Girl and things like that. Yeah. Mark Silvestri with Witchblade, things of that oh, nature. Yeah. yeah. It got yeah. really, really ridiculously boobish and sexual mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And really objectified the females, objectified mm-hmm. their bodies. Um you know, put them in those crazy porn poses and things yeah. like that. So I do think that that is a I mean, I, I'm a man, so obviously I like looking at that stuff. But, you know, at the same time, step back. Yeah, it's not a good evolutionary step toward trying to make things more yeah. on equal ground. Well, let me, let me ask you this one. Mm-hmm. Um, Zenscope. They, when, when you read the comics, they are probably the strongest women of any comic book. But you look at the cover, and it's, it's Alice in Wonderland with her boobs popping out. Mm-hmm. And it's mm-hmm. ultimate sexy... But it's a, it's it's pretty objectifying to say the least. How do you? But when I say going into it, when you read the comic, strongest women of anywhere, Marvel, DC, anybody. How do you feel about that dichotomy? I'm probably the wrong person to ask about that, honestly, because I don't get upset about other than like Vampirella. Um, <laughs> I mean, because. We talked about it before we started recording. Like, I remember Jean Grey in the Hellfire Club when she's Dark Phoenix, and she's literally walking around in a corset that almost doesn't fit her, mm-hmm. and panties, and like garters and whatnot. So, I mean, she and Emma Frost are like almost completely naked mm-hmm. while they're running around in these this this comic book. And I was probably nine when I read that. And I probably should have said, oh, they need to put some clothes on. And it's December in New York. <laughs> right. <don't get> <laughs> right. I mean, it didn't didn't bother me. I mean, I do wish, I guess the best way that I can say it is when I see the covers of the comic books, the covers of the comic books don't really bother me. I would like them to be a little bit more clothed. Mm-hmm. I understand the idea behind the comic book covers. What really angers me more is when people do fan art and deviant like on deviant yeah. art mm-hmm. and they take it they take an already overly sexualized character like vampirella or like harley quinn and, harley quinn and, uh, or wonder woman yeah. and power girl i've seen a lot of wonder woman and power girl mm-hmm. <laughs> that's right mm-hmm. i said it i need a second hold on right <laughs> Okay, go ahead. What angers me is when they already take an overly sexualized character or a character that's already sexy, and then they take it to that next level where it is pornography or it is just way too much. But that much. is the society we live in, unfortunately. Oh, so the fanfic, right. fan That stuff. bothers okay. me. The stuff on the cover of the comic book, maybe because I'm a longtime comic book reader, I know that's just part of the mm-hmm. course. I know that's something we have to do. The only time the fan... I didn't fi- like this Spider-Woman cover. Right. It did yeah, offend me it is as a pretty, woman. Uh, yeah. There's one of Mary Jane as well, where she's like all scrunched up and she's like she's got cleavage uh, and everything, and that one about. also irritated right. me. Right. But it's part. Except of I'm course. in love with Mary Jane. I can't <laughs> yeah. Right? Like I don't. Um, right. no, I like I her it. as a character. It's just that particular pose they put her in. It's like it, to why it, to expand on the fanfic thing that you said. Um, it doesn't bother me when it's over here. Here it is. It's fanfic. It's over here. It's away from Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the mainstream. It's when people then look at this over here and go, it should be over here Mm -hmm. in the mainstream that I go crazy. It's like, no, it should not. It should be here. And it shouldn't even be here, but if it's going to be anywhere, it should be Keep here. Keep it over right. here. Keep it way over it's here. Not, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it yeah. doesn't bother yeah. me because you can't find it if you don't look for it. It doesn't it, it, that's, pop that's up. And that's the thing. And I don't. And that's the courtesy. If yeah. somebody mm-hmm. derives some joy from drawing that, mm-hmm. rock on. That's right. awesome. I can't draw, so yay for you. <laughs> well, Betty um, Page, that's a great example. I mean, you know what? Yeah. A lot of people got a lot of joy out of that, and... You know, she didn't do anything wrong. You yeah, exactly. Wrong. Like if you that was if, just the thing. If if you're one of the people who creates the fanfic and you do that far left, I'm not going to look at it because I don't like it. If it gives you joy to draw it, rock on. Right. But I don't 
I don't want to see it on right. the comic yeah, books. Don't I agree with you. I see it in the mainstream. Yeah. Yeah. I agree so. completely. Okay. Um. Whew, I, I thought we were gonna we we're gonna be hurting for time now. Like, oh, we are short on time. I need to <laughs> move us along a little bit. This is a fun conversation. This almost needs to be two parts. I know. I know. Um. So let's go on to the main event. Now it's time for the main event. Okay, so for today's uh, main event, we're doing our top five favorite female heroes um, of any genre, and I think we're... Powers or no. Powers or no. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it could be books, movies, TV, whatever your thing is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I'll start with my number five, and this is something that most Green Lantern fans would never say, but Aresia from the Green Lantern Corps is one of my favorite females. Now, I'm not familiar with her, so please tell us about her. She is the... She's a perpetual teenager in the Green Lantern Corps. She got picked out of her alien high school. Mm. To wear the ring, um, hmm. I've I've always liked. If you watch the um, what is it, the Emerald Knights, Green Lantern Emerald Knights, mm-hmm. um, she you you get to watch the whole movie basically through her eyes because hmm. she is a great way in. Um, I like how powerful she is. I like the way she looks. I she's just she always connected with me a little bit nice. for whatever reason. But for and I had to bring you throw Green Lantern on the list. Hmm. Didn't she didn't she have a little fling with Hal if I'm not mistaken? Um, I think no, she did. because I think she, she did. was young. She's too. She's always been too young for him. I think I, unless it's a later that I missed. Maybe there's seven million. Are we talking Green about Lantern fanfic comics. again? No, no, no. I think in the comics <laughs> he's been on Tumblr. Yeah, in, in yeah. the comics, no, she she dated him for like maybe a week or two. I don't know. Uh, but she, she, was, she, there might have been a crush or uh, flirtings, but there wasn't maybe. a. Yeah, yeah. But Kaj, she, what are you suggesting here, buddy? Ew. Ew. It's like the whole kitty pride. I could, and I could say a very colossus. Yeah, we're not going to say a very bad thing, but I'm not going to. <laughs> or the Wolverine and Squirrel Girl. Okay, we'll move uh, on. Uh, we okay. were on a break. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney? Uh, my number five is Xena, the warrior princess. Yes. 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 Um, Just Lu- Lucy Lawless in general. <laughs> right, pretty much Lucy Lawless in general. She, you mean I'm, female Conan? Right, like, I'm. no, no. that's Red Sonja. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right, exactly. Fair enough. No, Hercules, not like, I'm straight as an arrow, him, yeah. but I wouldn't mind Lucy Lawless beating the shit. Crap out of me. I st- <laughs> caught it before I said it. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. I've got right. so much guitar in this, it's going to sound like Zone Song. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I told you they would slip out periodically. But yeah, no, um... I Yeah, uh, Xena was a great show. Xena was awesome. Yep. Xena was awesome. I actually, and... It's probably going to make some enemies. I thought it was a better show than Hercules. No, it was. Oh, hands down. No doubt. And, you know, um, Wonder Woman inspired. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, because when Xena came out, like, there was talk. I thought she looked like Wonder Woman. Well, I'm sure that. Well, okay, fun, fun fact. I don't know if you guys remember the TV show version of Weird Science. Yes. Uh, the yes. woman that played yeah. the, uh, whatever the creation is, uh-huh. she was originally cast as Xena, the warrior princess. Really? Yep. And there was something that happened. And so Lucy Lawless, who was cast as one of the Amazons, mm-hmm. um, stepped in and was just perfect. Perfect well, for the role. Isn't that a happy accident? Right. Yeah. Perfect for the Gotta role. Love so. those. Nice. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Uh, my number five, we've already mentioned it before, Supergirl. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, just, just a great character, cousin, cousin of Superman, and just like, like the same thing. Like you know, she is, she is innocent and a little, a little naive at first, but then finds like she grows into her power. She and she is legitimately, uh, debatably one of the like stronger than Superman. So, do you lump Power Girl in with Supergirl because they are the same? Because the one one's a clone of the other, right? Um. Uh, oh, do you, does it got to have that red and that red and blue? Well, I th- well, it's it's got to have the red and blue. It, Wait, it, which well, one has the boob window? Uh, Sorry, Power, Power Girl. Girl. Okay, Power Girl. Um, <laughs> I, t- I, res- I, I respect that. Power Girl, but I, 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 Supergirl definitely definitely beats her out. Yeah, fair enough. Just be, just because of the popularity and because yeah, because of the yes, I like mm-hmm. I like the you got to have the yes. Yeah, you got you got to be an L. I t- mm. Cars are all right. So my number five. Uh, especially in the first two movies in the franchise. Uh, I don't know if she even did another one. I think she did do another one, but uh, Linda Hamilton's Sarah Connor yes. from The Terminator. Um, I really loved her development between who she was in the first film 
you know, as very much, very much a, you know, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Definitely a not librarian. The, yeah, a, a wallflowerish kind of party mm. girl, a little bit of a party girl, that whole thing, developing into the absolute undeniable badass she was in t2 <laughs> right you know? the first scene when she's doing the oh yeah the, she's oh just my you know gosh. and like it's another one that could beat me up and i'd be okay with it <laughs> yeah and again what i liked about it was that <laughs> james cameron did not shy away from developing her mm-hmm. you know she didn't come in as a badass she, and that would have made no sense she needed to have that experience with mm-hmm. reese and the terminator and all that to become you know john connor's mom and all that and a legend in her own right so no question she, okay so my number four is going to be the previously mentioned vampirella um Sorry. has been a, no it's okay <laughs> you're 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 allowed to disagree um i think she's a great character think what you want about her cheesy 70s um borat type uh bikini that she wears um <laughs> It's, she's a very well drawn out character. There's, it's it's she's got a history as convoluted as Joker, and they don't make any apologies about it. They they mention, yeah, well, sometimes I, I was a I was an alien from a blood planet. Sometimes I'm an actual vampire. Sometimes I I was uh, the daughter of Dracula, and and they don't make any apologies about it. They mention it I'm like yeah, and you know I enjoy it anyway. And that to me is fun. That's the only way you can keep that character going. That's cool. And you know. It's, very dark storylines, but at the same time, not not gross. I, I mean, there's been some times, but in general, it's not a gross storyline. It's it, they're fun. I'll say this about Vampirella: there are very few character female characters that are as stylish in the whole like visual overall visual presentation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think as, as I'll her. give her that. Yeah. <laughs> no. If you, if you can get past the the the, the, the I like bad her as a character. Suit, read, I just read some don't of, like the swimsuit. <laughs> read some of the stuff from uh, about five years ago when they were coming out, and she, she wasn't wearing that all the time. She was she was wearing a business suit, well, hanging no, out with Diana Prince. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's all she almost looked Matrixy, and I liked it. You know, and I like her better when she has a sidekick because I don't like her when she doesn't for gotcha. whatever reason. She, <laughs> she needs that. But anyway, okay. So what's your number four? Furiosa. From Mad Max, okay. Fury Road. Oh, yep. ah, from the, sure. the the graphic novel uh, and Charlie's Theron. Throne. Th- th- to uh, another name, I'll mess yeah. up. Charlie's Theron. 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 Yeah, Charlie's Throne. Theron. Theron. Furiosa. Okay. Not so. not the uh, Tina Turner, huh? I do like <laughs> Anti Entity. I'm not even gonna lie. I do like Anti Entity, but uh, <laughs> but we yeah. don't need another hero. No, we I'm don't. Sorry. We Master really don't. <laughs> 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 Welcome to Thunderdome. Uh, two men enter, one man leaves. <laughs> so yeah, I've heard. Uh, I have not seen the new Mad Max. I'm I'm behind on that one. Really, but good. I've heard that um, she stands out for sure as a. She oh, does. Yeah. What's kind of cool about the movie in general is that all the most of the effects are actual practical effects. Mm-hmm. They're not. There's there is CGI in the film, but there's not a lot of it. So like when you see trucks blowing up and and people fighting, it's literally stuntmen mm. and explosives. Now I'm not That's sure cool. if it's true or not, but I believe I read that the the storm that came in they literally they went like four months out of um, over their time because they were waiting for that real storm to come through yeah i mean it's cgi'd bigger in yeah. the film but that's it's actually there. an it's actual crazy. sandstorm that actually mm. occurred they get engulfed in mm-hmm. at one point in time um while they're driving the fury road mm. um but what's really cool about her is one i mean she's just kind of this I, she's she's a really damaged character oh, yeah. that yeah i mean she's a damaged character and she's there's really not a lot likable about her. No. Um, but what she's doing, her her arc, she's doing it for the right reasons. Um, so, I mean, you haven't seen it, but I don't want to spoil it for no, anybody okay. who's listening. No, it's okay. Oh, we spoil it. Right, but I mean, she because she she basically takes the the women that are the brood mare for a Morton Joe, who's your big bad guy, mm-hmm. and she k- takes them and basically steals them from him and then is trying to get them to a safe place so they're no longer these broodmares and rape victims every night and um it's implied that she used to be one of them one of them before Mm -hmm. she became this kind of liberator liberator general in his army and whatnot and so 
while she's this really damaged, not likable, nice character, she's got this great... Her purpose is pure. Mm, nice. Is to kind of save these girls. Excellent. I mean, it doesn't work out, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, my number four is an it's an anime character. Her name is Maka, and she's from Soul Eater. I haven't read the. I've seen that one. It's mm-hmm. oh, it's on. Netflix. I think they both have it on Netflix and Hulu. Mm-hmm. R- kind of s- stylish, cartoonish type of. Uh, well, it's an anime, but it's even more like it feels more like a cartoon as as far as they drew uh, draw it. But she's the lead in this in this uh, series, and she basically has her partner who is a, a scythe. It's a big death scythe, and she uh, basically fights supernatural beings for the. Uh, for the department, um, oh gosh, I can't remember what. Uh, basically, for the Grim Reaper. Oh, nice, outstanding. Okay, my number four is Sue Storm from uh, the Fantastic Four. Not a big surprise. Now, didn't uh, see that coming. Uh, uh, to quickly, kind of, the thing about her is she evolved from one type of Would wife. You like a coffee? No, uh, one type of <laughs> wife and mother mm-hmm. to another type of wife and mother. But the whole time she stayed a wife and mother. Yeah, and I honestly think that that's great that they mm-hmm. that they kept that intact. Mm-hmm. And it's fine that she got stronger, more independent, smarter, her own person. Mr. That's a, that's a mm. that's a great evolution. <laughs> but she never. I mean, other than in Civil War when I think they did separate. Yeah, that was. Um, you know, she was a devoted wife and mother. Mm-hmm part of that great family dynamic and that, there's strength to that yeah that makes mm-hmm. that that as of the strength of that group and she is the most powerful of the four mm-hmm. no doubt about it Absolutely. you know when she went evil she tore them to bits mm-hmm. you know so yeah my pick i dig it okay. my number three is both the tv and the comic book versions of michonne uh, from walking dead you guys, you, you listen to the show. You've watched Walking Dead. You know what I'm talking about. I don't have to go on. Michonne's the bomb. Yeah, I had to stop reading that comic after after the at the, uh, at the dismantling of the governor. Really? Mm. Yeah. Oh, I, I stopped at um, the death of the guy who got batted. Yes. Yeah. Mm. No, for me it was actually the dismantling of the governor. You know. 12 pages of torture and i just at the end of that i was like i can't that was torture yeah i can't do this Mm. anymore this is just too depressing that was gross yeah agent carter agent peggy carter yeah i'll talk about no powers yep she doesn't need them she doesn't need them um and i will say that i think uh, cinematically she's my favorite version of her she's great in the comic book but i like her in the and i really like her in Haley Atwell's awesome oh, yeah. as Peggy Carter, and I just I like the the butt kicking scene inside the diner in her first series. <laughs> so what so. happened to her? I forget. Oh, sorry, too soon. Oh, oh. well, she, she actually died of old age. she died of old age. She's not a victim of the snap. So nice try, <laughs> right. buddy. Uh, and and she, I have a feeling she'll be back in Endgame. She'll, she'll uh, mm, that snapped. would be interesting. Yeah, snap. She came back. Back back. <laughs> Time travel, baby. Yeah, it's a, no, but I, I totally agree with you on that. Uh, with with especially in her series of just, you know, mm-hmm. bring it bringing it to that era. That yeah, the guys are like, oh, why don't you go get us some coffee? Mm-hmm. Blah 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 blah. And she's like, oh no, this is my this mm-hmm. is my home. I'm well, and I mean the the second first series ends with a great line where he one of the male characters is like, well, he took all the credit for what you did, and she's like. I don't need that. I right. know my worth. Oh, well, and even even just to <laughs> kind of even yeah. rival Howard Stark too, mm-hmm. just to kind of put him in mm-hmm. his place too. So right. mm-hmm. yeah, good stuff. Uh, my number three is one of my. I'm going to switch it up. So my number three is going to be Buffy Summers. Nice. Buffy. Boom. Ever we forgot about Buffy? Forgot you know, about Buffy. Nice. Yes. I mean, yeah. you, you list the show we've talked about Buffy a million and a half times. Yeah. You know we love her. Yeah, I'm a strong character. Mm-hmm. Right. Period. Mm-hmm. The Slayer. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna alter my number three, and then a little later I'll bring up why. Oh, but oh. no, no, I'm altering my number three, and you, Dub, will appreciate the number three I'm going to put in okay. place, and that would be the character of Snow White from Fables. Oh yes, oh, okay. yeah. I believe married, that married big bad. Wolf. I absolutely loved from page one to the end of the series. Mm-hmm. I absolutely loved that character. Oh, oh yeah. she actually reminded me a lot, even though she wasn't wife. She reminded me a lot of Sue Storm. Yeah, there was best a lot female of character in Fables. Yeah, there was a lot of qualities yeah. uh, that um, were Wonder Woman ish, Sue Storm ish. Mm-hmm. You but know, it but, was not but a again, direct knockoff. but not a direct knockoff at all. And yeah, so she was 
great. Yeah, from and, and the and the way she played off of her sister. Yes, that Rose you don't Red, really yep. know about. You right. Know? right. I, well, I'd even have like Snow White from Once Upon a Time too. Kind of this like just what, was she like? I, I didn't get to read Fables, but is she kind of like? You've uh, only had the book for like two years. I, like, like <laughs> well, always literally. remember that Once <laughs> Upon a Time. Point always like remember six, that Once so. Upon a Time is Fables light. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So, so yeah, just think about it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, you, you you see her like as Disney, and it's like, oh, you know, I'm just this, I'm I'm a girl that you know meets up the, with the, with the seven dwarves. She but was, then in the show, basically she was in the like in the a, book, a she's hunter like a, a archer. no. She's actually not an overt badass. She's more she, of a there's pragmatic. There's times she is. There's times, but she's more of a pragmatic she has to be. thinker. Yeah. And she's, she's a politician. And she's the leader. Ah. Uh, okay. And nobody questions that. Nope. Because and she stands up to Prince Charming. It, exactly. Ooh. Right. <laughs> okay. She does. Fair enough. Okay. Um. Yeah. Back, back up to me. It's you. <laughs> Number two is um probably one of the reasons why video games still exist is Laura Croft. Um. And no, not the movies because ah. those have all been bad. <laughs> uh, not not really the comics, but the the video game character of Laura Croft is amazing. Um. You've never seen a bunch. We were. I was in the Navy. You've never seen a bunch of bunch of sailors sitting there watching somebody play a video game for hours on end. <laughs> the greatest braid in the jungle. Nice. <laughs> Loved it. Um, yeah. Just just a great character all the way around. And no right. superpowers. Nice. She Hulk. Yes. Oh, number your number two, She Hulk. Yep, nice. She Hulk. The fourth Jennifer. wall breaker before all fourth wall breakers. Yep. Yeah, real interesting what happens to her in uh, Old Man Logan, but <laughs> Mm. Oh, yeah. That's a tough story. All right, so uh, my number two, it's uh, probably one of my first comic book crushes, uh, Rogue from the X-Men. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, I think it's like I said redheads. before, <laughs> you know, we're all waiting for Miss Marvel 2 so we can see Rogue take her powers. <laughs> be, Just to the epic proportion that, that she's going to have to take her powers. I know that they, also on Facebook, they were saying that they really want, at some point, there's going to be an X-Men versus Avengers. Like, they oh, want to do that. I hope to They God definitely want to do that movie, so... Cross the fingers. You never know. Mm. Yep. Um, my number two is also She-Hulk, and there's also a tie. My tie is is Siege's number one, which we'll get to. <laughs> but I'll talk more about She-Hulk right now. So Jennifer Walters, lawyer, uh, cousin to Bruce Banner, through a blood transfusion when she was um, on the verge of death, she gained the uh, Hulk powers. Initially, she was savage, mm-hmm. but then she they had her retain. She couldn't control it. Right. They had her retain mm-hmm. her jennifer personality Mm -hmm. and she was just she's just fun and funny and has developed into um you know stronger better more important um she's the first female character to to beat the champion of the universe Mm -hmm. you know about that one Mm -hmm. siege yeah um oh we've had we that was a one of our who be two yeah yeah and um she uh she's just all around a great character and cinematically I can't wait I can't wait either up. I hope that they do justice to the I character I need her to show up I need her to have a TV show like right now yeah either a TV <laughs> show or in the MCU I'll mm-hmm. take either one I'd mm-hmm. like to see Lucy Lawless play her I think she could mm. I think she could is she, she fits is she a little bit on the too old side though yeah she really yeah. is She, but she could do it but yeah I mean in her most recent iteration um, she's a little Jessica Jones just because she's actually Bruce has died, and she has become Hulk. Oh, she's okay. no longer mm. She-Hulk. She's okay. Hulk. Mm. And uh, she's back to the situation where she can't control it. Oh. And mm. um, so, I mean, they've changed it a little bit, but her most recent iteration is she's just, she's really tormented about it. It's after End of Civil War Two is mm-hmm. where it kind of comes into play. I, and it I, was an interesting run, too. I also loved her in Fantastic Four when she... She's Supposed leader A force yeah. now. Well, j- just to just to button this up, I know the perfect person that could play her because she's also a stunt woman, Jesse Graff. True. Yes. Mm, True. Okay. She would. She would rock that. I think she's too skinny. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. No. I think. Well, I, I mean, think they, of. I think of She Hulk as muscular. Well, I have China. This way, you know, they, they, they do mocap. She'll, they'll just do motion capture, so they'll have her in <laughs> well, the suit. They can build her up a little bit as far as muscles go, but she would. It'll As an de- actress, she'd be amazing. It'll depend on what they do with her. Because if they do the traditional route, they're going to need one actress to play 
Jennifer and right. one actress to play She Hulk. Right. Mm-hmm. If they do it where she's in that John Bryan run, she's she, gonna. Always she she's always She Hulk. So okay. she's always green and she's always She Hulk. So you only need one actress. Which okay. I think is the better um, way of doing it. Yeah. I mean, if they go back to her most recent iteration, they'll have to do the same thing where she's one actress as Jennifer and one actress right. as. Hmm. That, it, I would old. like to see it where they would just do it. She's just out and proud She Hulk because that's, I think, her best run in yeah. comics is where I'd she's agree. just not pretending to be somebody else okay and off to the number ones um and this is my my number one pick is the ultimate grand champion of all things that are who be two um yes that's for you mr winchester (laughs) (laughs) yeah i know you're so upset but one miss harleen quinzel Mm -hmm. harley quinn um i i can't think of a better character honestly i i look at her the same way i look at deadpool they're just such fun Wall breaking characters. Um, if she would have still been with the Joker, I would have hated her as a character. I think that was terrible. Though, but I, it was almost a redemption story of her getting away from Joker. Mm-hmm. And they're like they're that. fine, just overexposed. That's the only. The I get no, I, I, I get right it. Now. I get it. But Did, have you started reading Heroes in Crisis? No, I'm going to. It's, it's they they just had they just uh, put up the next ep, uh, the next issue and it's oh it's really good. <laughs> cool. Your number one, Wonder Woman. Big surprise! Which is my, which is my tie number two. Really, <laughs> really. I can't. I would have guessed from the <laughs> know, shirt you're right? wearing. This and, is actually Captain Marvel. Oh, okay. yeah, uh, yeah. Well, the, the fact that you're wearing the crown for the Wonder Woman. Crown, but you know the two little, the two little yeah. wing things. I thought it was. I thought it was. Yeah, it I do have a Wonder Woman t-shirt, but I didn't wear it. I did the visible dread is on the roof. Yeah. Is Marvel doing some subliminal type stuff here with this well, little logo? I mean, Wonder Woman is probably hmm. the strongest superhero of them all. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> no, Hulk is strongest there is. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think she beat him. All right, but so. Storm beat her, so. It's, oh, uh, that's Thanos DC versus everybody. Marvel, that ridiculous thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, so, <laughs> so my number one animation character, you all know her and love her, Ghost in the Shell, Major Kusanaki. <laughs> yeah, and we've talked about her a million times. She's, she just k- takes the, kicks not ass, the takes movie names, version. not the movie. But I do like Scarlett Johansson as her. I just didn't like the writing and I didn't like the directing, but she was great. Or the I, visual or anything else. <laughs> I, no, the visual I liked. I just Taj didn't. Taj is the only person that likes it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, no, no. I didn't say I like Ghost in the Shell. Okay. I just said I liked Scarlett Johansson as Major Kusanaki, but the story was... I can't say it or I'm going to get a guitar riff. So, <laughs> <laughs> I've already done like three. I, I will not stop. <laughs> um, but yeah, Major Kusanaki. Nice. It'll be a Metallica concert. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I open my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My number one is uh, Princess slash General Leia Organa yeah, from... From Star Wars, oh, wow. um, Star Trek. Shut up. Game, Game no, of here's the thing. I'm gonna do this real quick. Okay, the the strong female character. Okay, that's a thing that gets said. It's sort of a buzz buzz term mm-hmm. right now. Um, she was the best one ever because she was placed with two men who had their own charisma. And her charisma was never, she never fed off of them. Her charisma was hers. She was equal space in that trip, in that trifecta of the leads in in Star Wars, especially in Star Wars, when from the Death Star rescue, I'm doing the quote signs, Mm -hmm. on to the leader she was in Empire Strikes Back, she had everything she was strong she was smart she was compassionate she was organized she was tough she was courageous um and she was all that without having to feed off of anybody else or you know like ex- like I, like tell everybody i'm this and i'm that she just was mm-hmm. and she's the most hardcore disney princess right and they've mm-hmm. and then when she came back as the general in the small roles oh yeah she was um it was so amazing to see her again yes she was you I know think she, she should have went down with the ship but uh, no not at all i love i, I love the ge- third one's gonna be hard to watch yeah mm-hmm. i love general leia i, th- I mean yeah. she as as much as i hated the last jedi i loved her 
even she was one of the redeeming factors of that nice. film for mm-hmm. sure. Okay, guys, that's a show. Um, yeah, check out the Facebook page. Uh, check out the Twitter at at, at iHeartGeekShow. Uh, yeah, that's what it's called. Go to the website www.iheartgeekshow.com. Use the con we paid extra for it. Mm-hmm. And until next time, I'm Dub. I'm Siege. I'm Kaj. I'm PB and Jason. Keep, Keep on, on geeking, geeking on. on. <laughs> I know what to get Courtney for Christmas. Vampirella. Uh. <laughs> You've been listening to iHeartGeek. Our Twitter account is at iHeartGeekShow. Hope you enjoyed the show. I think in the terms of your Marvel versus DC, I... From their female side, I think Marvel does a better job with their female superheroes. I, th- well, I think they just, just write because them out. they're people, and and yeah. I don't mean that to insult DC because you know I am a hardcore Wonder Woman girl mm-hmm. and I love Mira well, and DC, I love Zatanna, right. but with the exception of Wonder Woman, mm-hmm. most of their female superheroes are kind of built around their male counterparts. Mm-hmm. True. Not that they're not awesome. Like, yeah. Like Fair I said, I I love them, but I just I feel that Marvel, and I'm I'm a comic book nerd that's on both sides that loves both. Like I don't. So do I. Appreciate one over the other. I love them both. I think the female characters are just a lot more fleshed out. They just made people. That yeah, I mean, tied to other people. So yeah, much. they're more, much more fleshed so, you know, out. I like there. the Justice League because I like the characters of the Justice League. Yeah. I like the Green Lantern oh, yeah. Corps because mm-hmm. I like all the Green Lantern mm-hmm. Corps. Yeah. And they're tied to each other. And yeah. I'm okay with that, too. Yeah, but I mean, like, in the terms of Wonder Woman, it's Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. The all Holy three ent- entities on their own, but then you build them together. Mm-hmm. But then in the case of, like, Mira, who I love, Mira is not her own entity even to this day she's not really her own entity she is consort to aquaman right Mm -hmm. well but i mean they fixed that with like harley quinn for instance um because she's not a part of the joker anymore yeah and they fixed it with black canary she does her own thing and the thing is and i think that was uh, that's you're kind of making my point is because i feel like the marvel women were created that way to begin with and dc, and the DC women had to become that right and Which probably directly because of marvel probably i mean well, harley Har- harley did her own thing though they just yeah had, they had to do her because they had to keep competing but with she's Deadpool. more of a she's more of a newer character so like i would even because of her newness newishness newishness yeah. in comparison to say satana mm-hmm. or or mira or I'm just right. blanking on Black Power Mary Girl or Supergirl. Just about anybody. Right, yeah. because I mean, even Supergirl, who's arguably as strong as Superman, is. Well, she's Superman's cousin. She's actually. Well, I well, bet she was, she's stronger. She's actually stronger. She's, yeah, she's yeah stronger. I mean, she's she's technically yeah. Wonder Woman is the strongest. I'm going to be putting this at the end right. of the show. Yeah, yeah sorry. Oh, 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 no worries. Oh, don't forget Big Barda. I love Big Barda. Yeah. Mm. I love Big Barda. Oh, Big Barda is awesome. I hate the new gods, and with that. Yeah.